In this video, I aim to create a brand identity from scratch covering the logo, colors, illustrations for social media, and essential graphics needed to launch a product. This is particularly useful for small companies or individual entrepreneurs who may not have the budget to hire a design agency or even for professional designers who want to play around with ideation or create some drafts. I created a brand identity brief um, for a fictional coffee company called Tribolinos. Uh, having a brief or plan before you start makes it easier to maintain consistency and ensure nothing is overlooked. In short, we need something that looks tribal, but relates to coffee. In addition to the logo, we also need mock-ups and possibly some social media images. It's important to select brand colors to maintain consistency throughout. Go to the recraft.ai website. Um, you can either log in or click try recraft free. Then you create an account or sign in with Google. Once you're logged in, you can create a new project by selecting create new project at the top or wherever you see the option. This will take you to the Recraft interface where you can get started. You can create a raster image, vector image, image set, or a mock-up. Let's start by creating a logo. So I'll choose the vector image option. This creates an area where the image will be generated. You can move it around and adjust its size by dragging from the corners, as you can see the width and height values changing here. You don't want images that are too big or too small. Most AI tools work best with a 10, 24 pixel image. You can also click on the numbers to manually adjust the size for precision. I'll set it to the default value. Now, if you click on the vector art, it will open additional options with various art styles. In the first tab, we have vector art styles ranging from line art to cute kawaii vectors. There are also different icon art styles from outline to gradient. Next, there's the logo symbol option, which allows you to create simple logo symbols. Click on that to select it. Now fill in the company description where you can briefly describe what your company does or what you want to see in the design. I included keywords like coffee, tribal, exotic. For the company name, enter the exact name you want to appear under the logo. In my case, it's Tribalinos. When you're ready, click Recraft. It may take 10, 20 seconds for the generation process. I'll speed up the video during these parts so you don't have to wait. Here are the results. Of course, you can click Recraft multiple times until you find one you like. So we have a black vector version on a transparent background, a color version with a background, the symbol with text underneath, a pattern, and a small presentation of the logo. Sometimes you'll see tips in the bottom left corner, like in this case where it says I can double click on the vector to edit the colors. Let's do that now. You can see that we can edit the colors. This one has only one color, but if it had more colors, we could edit them all here. We can choose any color we want. However, what I want to do is add the brand colors as a palette here so I can easily access them um, later. After clicking create, you can add your brand colors here. You can use the sliders, but since I already have the color codes, I'll just paste them here. I'll add the second color as well. When you're ready, you can save the palette. Now you can see it appears in my palettes. You can use delete uh, to remove an existing palette. Let's quickly create a second palette for the accent colors because it might be useful later on. So when I click on my palette, it will color the design in that color, make sure the design is selected, then go to, to export. From there, you have uh, different uh, options. First, I'll save it as a PNG. Um, you can change the name if you want and save it to your hard drive. Notice that the export option doesn't appear if the design isn't selected, so make sure it's selected. Next, let's export it as a vector SVG file as well. By the way, you can find all the designs generated in your history. Either go to the menu and choose history or click on the home button and then go to the history tab. Uh, you can see the logo, patterns, and more here. Let's create a new project now. I want a more detailed logo symbol, something like a tribal mask. Let's select vector image, then go to vector art to choose an art style. This time, I'll select the icon tab and try the pictogram style. 
I'll describe the tribal mask briefly. Here, you can control the level of detail. For instance, choosing low details and hitting the recraft button will give us a simple icon suitable for small scales. These are all minimalist and work well for icons, but I want more detail, so I'll select extreme detail. It's important to note that what's extreme for an icon isn't the same as for a photograph. Here are the initial results. I'll hit recraft again to see more options. These four look interesting. Now let's explore a cool option in recraft. Since I'm on the icon tab, it shows uh, my icon styles. If I click on it, I can create my own custom brand style. Let's click on the plus sign. Here I'll name it mask and upload three image references to help recraft learn that style. You can upload up to five images. Now I'll change the name to Tribal Mask and click Create the Style. It will automatically add it to the current art styles. You can see it now appears in my list of art styles. When I click Recraft, I should get something similar to that style in terms of design and even colors. It's a pretty cool option. I played around with a few more styles, but I think the pictogram art style will fit what I have in mind. I'll use extreme details and then press recraft. Um, from all the versions, my favorite is version 3. By the way, you can create variations of this image if you want. Go to fine tune, where you can adjust the slider to control how similar you want the generation uh, to be to your original image. I'll choose very similar. Then when I click modify the image, I'll get four more results similar to the original image. This one looks nice. I'll use this to get another variation even more similar by adjusting the slider. When I click modify, I'll get another four variations. It looks okay, but I think I'll stick with the original for the final version. So finally, we've decided on the logo symbol we want. What's the next step? I'll start by saving it first as a simple black version. I'll save it as a PNG first, then as a vector SVG. Now I want a color version with the brand color, so I'll double click on the logo. Then I will select the palette that has that brown color. Then we'll repeat the process, saving both PNG and SVG vector formats. PNG is good for the web and also supports transparency, which is why I chose PNG instead of JPG. SVG vector files are good for printing because they can be scaled to any size without losing quality. Um, now I want a version with the company text underneath. I'll select the text tool, click somewhere on the canvas, and type the, the brand text Tribolinos. I can move it around and you can see it has some auto guidelines that let me easily center the text you can change the text size, and maybe I'll put the text all in caps. You can also change the font for the text. Try a few to see what works. Um, I think I'll go with this Paytone 1 font. Once it's aligned and I'm happy with the size, maybe I'll change the color to the, the brand color. It can be any color, but I'll probably stick with the same brown one. After a break and with fresh eyes, I studied the result and decided to make the text a little bigger. Now that we have two separate objects, I want to save them as one image, both the symbol and the text. To do this, I need to merge them. With both selected, I'll go to the top where it says Merge and click on it. The merging process has rasterized the image so it's no longer vector-based. However, that's not a problem because you can vectorize any image you generate or upload from your computer using the Vectorize button if I click on it, in a few seconds, I'll have a vector image again. Now that we know how to resize images by dragging from the corners, you can see the actual size here. However, if you notice that there's more space at the top than at the bottom, and you might want to crop it instead of resizing, you can do that too. It's similar to resizing. Hold down the control key and then drag to make the crop. Now that the symbol and text are merged and the complete logo is ready for export, just like before, I prefer to save both PNG and SVG files. The logo part is done. We have the symbol and the logo with text. Now, let's move on to the next part. There are many things you can do, but I'll try to present some options in a way that helps you learn more about the interface and what Recraft can do. Go to the menu and let's create a new project. This time, I want to create a presentation for the logo. Click on Mockup. In this area, you can modify the ratio. 
Instead of a square, I'll choose a 16.9 ratio, similar to what you see in videos. For the prompt, I'll add something like close-up of a white coffee cup on a wooden tabletop with elements like jungle leaves in the background and a warm golden hour lighting. Now, this is the result you get. By default, it adds a small area where you can generate vector files, but since I already have a logo, I don't need to generate anything. Instead, I'll select and delete that box. Then I'll drag one of the color logo version PNG files over the mockup. When I release it, it might flicker a little, showing that it is loading, and once it's done, I can see the handles on the image, allowing me to move the logo around to place it where I want. In this case, I'll move it onto the coffee mug. You can use the corners to scale it down so it fits, and you can even flip it around by dragging those corners over the opposite corners. I'll adjust it until I'm satisfied. Also, Notice the 50% on the top right. You can adjust the zoom from there. I'll set it to 80% to see it larger. Now that it's zoomed in, I can pan around using the hand icon at the top or by pressing the space bar and dragging around. With the cursor icon, I can select objects on the canvas and move them around. I'll change the zoom back to 50% now. If I select the logo and go to export, it will export only that logo. However, if I want to export the mock-up itself, I need to select the mock-up image and then go to export. You'll notice that it has different width and height dimensions corresponding to the mock-up image. From there, I can save it as a JPG. Typically, if you want transparency, you would save as PNG. If your design has just a few colors, PNG will have a smaller file size on disk. However, for designs with many colors like a photo or this mock-up, Saving as JPG will result in a smaller file size on disk than PNG. So um, this image mockup works well for online presentations. But what if I want a larger image suitable for printing? Um, here's what I like to do. First, I delete the logo. Then I select the mockup image. And at the top, there's only one option available. Rasterize mockup. Clicking on it transforms the mock-up into a non-interactive photo. You might wonder why I did this step. Well, now that I have the photo selected, I have more options available. Here we have Clarity Upscale, which simply makes the image larger. However, what I'm interested in is the premium function called Creative Upscale. This function not only enlarges the image, but also creatively enhances the small details to make it look clear and appealing. This option takes longer than a normal upscale, but is worth the wait for achieving a high quality result. As you can see, the image is now so large that I can only see a portion of the entire photo. To navigate around, I can use the space bar and drag with the left mouse button, or I can adjust the zoom to something like 25%. On the left, you can see the real image size, which is quite large. Now I can convert this large image back into a mock-up using the flag-like icon that says convert to mock-up. Once the conversion is finished, I can drag my PNG logo on top. Just like before, it will detect the shapes in the image, allowing me to easily place the logo on the mug, conforming to its shape. I'll scale it and move it around until it fits my vision. Now I'll select the mock-up image and go to export. I'll choose the JPG option to save it to my computer. As you can see, the image is now large and clear. We can zoom in and still see clear details on the mug. Um, I'll go back to the menu and create a new project. This time, I'll select the mock-up again uh, and choose a 3.2 ratio, similar to what a digital camera uses. Instead of a mug, I'll generate a mock-up for a paper coffee bag. After deleting the vector generation area, if you want to see another generation to find what works best, just hit Recraft again. You can also play around more with the prompts. For example, instead of a jungle, you might want to include palm trees and the sea blurred in the background in the generation. Now, if you don't like the composition, perhaps the product is too far away, you can crop it by holding down the control key and dragging the corners. Let's say I want something like that. Um, you can click on rasterize mockup to convert it to a simple photo. Afterward, you can use clarity upscale or creative upscale uh, to enlarge it. Alternatively, you can use fine tune or variate. With variate, 
you can change the aspect ratio and generate a new image in that aspect ratio. With fine tune, you can get variations of the original image. There's a slider to adjust how similar the variations should be to the original. I suggest playing around with the settings and trying different options until you find something that works for you. You also have an undo button at the top so you can go back to the previous generation if you want. I'll use it to go back until I get to the original image because I like that the bag had a clearer texture on the front. I'll just use the creative upscale button to make it larger. Now I'll wait for about one or two minutes. Once it's done, I have the larger image. I'll adjust the zoom so I can see it better and then I'll save it as a JPG file on my computer. I can now drag the logo on top, but nothing happens because they are just two overlapping images. To create a mock-up, I need to select the photo and use the Convert to Mock-up button. Then I'll be able to drag the logo on top and adjust it as needed. I'll export it again as a JPG, and now we have a high-quality mock-up with our logo on the coffee bag, complete with the paper texture. Pretty cool. Now, let's create a new project. I'll choose the raster image option and then select the enterprise art style. Since I want to create a banner image, I'll set the ratio to 2.1. Adjusting the zoom to see it better, I'll use a detailed prompt to describe what I want in that banner and then hit recraft. From there, I'll get two different versions to choose from. If you don't like the banner image, you can choose recraft again some social media websites might find this banner too tall, but since we don't have a ratio smaller than 2.1, I'll crop the image using the control key and dragging from the corner. Now I'll use the fine tune option, adjust the slider to determine how similar I want it to be and modify the image. I prefer the second image. Next, I want to add the logo on top. Um, since I don't need a mock-up where the logo appears on an object, I'll simply place it in the image. However, there's an issue. The logo is brown and the background is dark, making the logo hard to see. Fortunately, we have the vectorize option. Once it's vectorized, I can change the color to something lighter from our brand colors. Um, to save both as one image, I'll select both the image and the logo and use the merge button. Um, now I can save it as a JPG and as you can see, it looks quite nice. Now let me show you one last project. I'll drag the logo symbol onto the canvas. As you can see, there's some space around the symbol. In fine tune, I'll choose quite similar. Then for the style, I'll select photorealism. I want a Mayan style tribal stone sculpture, so I'll add a prompt that describes that. When I modify the image, I get some nice results. Currently, there isn't a control to precisely keep the shape and just change the style like the control net, but maybe they will add it in the future. Uh, if I change the slider to extremely similar, the logo will dominate the photo style too much, making it look more like a logo and less like a photo. Setting the slider to fairly similar gives the AI more freedom, allowing it to create some cool images like these. That's all for today. I, uh, Recraft has a Discord channel where you can ask questions and chat with other people. I also have a Discord channel and a Facebook group if you have any questions. If you found something useful in this video, leave a like or a comment to help me create more videos like this. Have a great day. A big thank you to our sponsor, Recraft AI, for making this video possible.